So I went ahead and created this Bex query based off of a sales info cube. Going to go ahead and open it now from my history folder by double clicking. And here you can see our query output. So essentially this query is based on a country, a particular sales plant, division, a material that's sold, confirmed quantity of that material, along with a net price. So let's take a look at the different features. We can see that we have a filter, a chart, and an information button. Our filter button enables us to apply a filter on our results. So for instance, if we only wanted to see India for a country, we would basically just click on this cell here, either right click and select filter value or double click on the blank cell. I'm going to right click and select filter value. And we can see here that it shows us our recently selected history, but we don't want that. We want to select India and currently our history just shows Germany and the UK. So we can select from our history, favorites, single values, or a range of values. Now we don't want a range because we just want one country. So let's go ahead and click on single values. And now it's pulling all the values that we currently have in our report for us to filter on. And now all we need to do is double click on India and it will restrict our output to just show India as a country. So now if we go back, so you could either undo the filter by going back into the filter, removing it from the criteria, and then coming back into the report, or you could simply just right click anywhere in the output and simply back to start, or because we've only gone one step, back one step. So now let's try to filter on, let's say, a division range. So we have a division 1, 2, 7, 4, 10, 8. Let's just do division 1 to 7. So to apply a filter on division, let's go back over here to our filter area. We'll double click. We'll set a range. So if you want to do a range between one and click over here on this little box to enable the selection option. And currently we're not seeing seven. We're not seeing any other numbers because it's showing our history. Select single values. Let's choose seven. Perfect. So as you can see, it's a little buggy. You might need to resize this screen in order to see all the options for selections, but just go ahead and hit okay. And it's going to apply this filter and show us only divisions between one and seven. And if we scroll down, we can see nothing is outside of that range. So this is a very powerful tool for quick analysis for any particular drilling that you need to perform. Now let's go back. So back one step again. And now let's Let's apply a different kind of filter, one that excludes. So let's not see anything from division seven. So let's click on division. So double click on the filter over here. Let's do a single value. 
let's either expand this or maximize this. So I'll go ahead and expand it. So seven. And you can see here, the more and less allows you to toggle multiple values for your selection. But because we just want seven, we're going to exclude this from our results. Simply move it over by clicking this move to selection. And then right click once it's on the chosen selection side and just do an exclude. And you can see how instead of being a green equal, it changed to a red equal. This is basically saying, hide this from our results. Let's hit OK. And Division 7 is no longer showing up. And you can see here that it, it's showing up over here as a filter of an exclusion. So as you scroll down, we're not seeing any 7 for divisions. Let's go ahead and undo that. So back one step. So doing this will bring us back to our default query view. And now let's take a look at report level filtering regarding drilling down, drilling across, and other ways of swapping out different values from this view or moving them around. So for instance, if we didn't really like where sales plant was, say we want to swap that with division, you simply click on the header sales plant, click, drag, and you can see right now we have like the little, the cautionary cannot perform action and it changes right there. So it's now going to be a drop down in between these two, but we don't want that. We want to swap it. So if we keep dragging onto the header, we can see that it changes to be like the recursive swap symbol. So if we do that, division and sales plant should exchange places. Perfect. Okay, so let's say that we want to move material before division. In order to do that, again, click on the header, click, drag to the left, and right here we can see that it's at the swap symbol, but if we're really careful, we can move it a little bit more, and we see the, the down arrow which basically means I'm going to squeeze in between country and division and move material there. So it looks like that didn't work. Let's try to move division over to the right. There we go. Okay, so I must have missed when I first dropped it. But as you can see, it's very easy to move columns around on the report output. Um, it's not exactly the best way to represent this data. It's a little inefficient, it's duplicate, but you can see that you can easily move things around and design the most aesthetically appealing report. So next we have the option of creating a chart. So right now, if we were to go ahead and click on chart, it would be graphing all of this information on a single chart. So not very intuitive. You can't really tell what's going on here. We have our legend here for our, our key figures for confirmed quantity and net price. We have our, our country is down here, but it really is cramped. You can't tell what's going on. Very difficult to analyze. So let's simply undo this by clicking on table. So table chart, this toggles between the two outputs. And let's just look at a chart that consists of confirmed quantity by country. So in order to do that, we have to drag out the extra fields. So you just click on the header and drag it outside of this table into the blank blue area over here. We can drag division out into this blank blue area over here. And it really doesn't matter where you're dragging these, just as long as it's not within this table structure. Let's take sales plan out drag and drop and let's get rid of 
net price. So not a lot of data to graph, but let's take a look at how it looks by hitting on chart. And as you can see, much prettier. The Beck system already knows which is the best possible graph for the particular criteria. So because we're only dealing with two different columns, one of country, one of quantity, it recommended the bar chart. Um, if you don't like this, you can simply right click on the chart and you can change the type. So chart type and you, obviously you can tell this is built within Excel. So whatever you're able to build within Excel, you can build within Business Explorer. So you can change this to a pie chart if you want. And there you have it. Okay, so let's go back to the table view. And our last button we're going to talk about for our report option buttons is the information button. Now this may be relevant, it may not be, but it essentially tells you details about who created this report, when it was last changed, who changed it, how relevant the data is, what's the description, etc. So if you want to know who broke the query at your business, you can easily tell this person changed it last and you know, you know that there's probably a backup you can revert to, so you can avoid a lot of outages. But it's very important to, you know, maintain certain backup copies of your primary queries because if users go and change your main queries for business and break them, it's going to be very difficult to get them back to their working state. So this concludes the lesson detailing query output and filters and other buttons you're able to use within the Bex Analyzer screen.